I'm going to start in one, five, four, three, two. <laughs> All right, um, welcome back for, uh, from the coffee break. Uh, my name is Raul Kamajer. I'm the, the subgroup lead for uh, the Corridor Free Status. And uh, we're going to have a very short presentation where I'm going to take you through you know, some of the basic principles around uh, collateral elimination. And um, we had to get there at some point. Cholera is targeted for elimination. So at some point we had to, uh, to agree on the framework because there are some countries who are really kind of you know, eager to get the certification for having eliminated cholera. So um, let's start. I can start without a, a small recap. I like this slide, it's, it's old, I think it's from 99, from uh, Dodel and uh, the famous uh, conference in Berlin where they discussed the principles of uh, disease elimination and uh, eradication, eradicability, the principles and the feasibility of disease elimination and eradication. I put the link there, please feel free to, uh, it's really a, a, a foundational article on the principles of disease elimination and eradication. Uh, the definitions are there, the control, elimination of disease, elimination of infection. I'm not going to go through that, but just to let you know that uh, these definitions are, are clear and well established. So cholera is not the first disease targeted for elimination. We had polio, that's targeted for eradication. We are almost there. Uh, measles, maternal and neonatal tetanus, hepatitis B, malaria, and all these other things. So we had uh, enough background information to play with, so we didn't start from scratch. So we just borrowed from the, for, from the other initiatives. So if you've worked in uh, disease elimination before, some of these things will sound very familiar to you. All right, so according to the roadmap by 2030, 2030, sorry, we expect at least 20 countries uh, to have eliminated cholera. 2030 is not far. I remember when we were saying that uh, poly eradication by 2000, some people thought that 2000 would never come. 2000 was there as, <laughs> as sooner than expected. So 2030 is almost there, trust me. And, uh, and I'm sure by 2030, we'll have a, a, le a lot of the same people in this room to discuss how to extend the elimination <laughs> target. So that's the, that's the plan. And there's a clear definition of cholera elimination in the, in the roadmap. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've seen that, but it's very clear that countries should not report confirmed cases of uh, cholera, there are no evidence of local transmission, and of course we have to trust the surveillance system, because if you say that you don't have cholera, we have to trust that the systems that you have in place to uh, you know, say that are actually trustable. So um, what is um, the purpose of the document? We want to um, tell country you know, how to standardize, how to uh, monitor the achievement, how to report it, and how to maintain it. So this is addressed to countries. So we have a purpose for countries. And we also have a purpose for the GTFCC because this is the body that we independently assess the cholera elimination status. So we have the assessment, we have the certification, and we have also the certification of the maintenance. So this is similar with, to what we've, we've seen in polio, the same thing we've seen in measles, same thing that we see in hep B, and same thing that we've seen other diseases targeted for for, 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 elimination, for elimination. So uh, this is a very clear definition, going a little bit beyond what is in the DGSCC uh, 2030 roadmap. Cholera has been eliminated as a threat to public health. So in elimination, we are not saying that you no longer have cholera, but it's eliminated as a threat to public health. So this definition is very important. So the definition happened in the country. The country, cholera-free, 
when you have all the countries in the regions that are cholera free, the region is cholera free. And if one day you have uh, all the countries, the regions in the world that are cholera free, so the world is cholera free. So uh, I think the principle is, is simple as it is now. So uh, cholera is eliminated as a threat to public health. It doesn't mean that we are not going to have cholera anymore. And when we are saying cholera, we uh, target a specific you know, uh, cholera uh, vibrio. So of course the toxigenic one, because there are hundreds of cholera strains out there, but we are targeting the toxigenic one. 01139. So the one actually uh, releasing the toxin that causes diarrhea and all these things. So we are targeting the one that carries that the gene TX, uh, CTX AB. Uh, I don't even know what it is, but I put it there, so I took it for granted. <laughs> I'm just kidding you. So there are some core requirements. So uh, the principle really is simple, but when you move into how do you apply those principles, to actually certify a country, you realize that it becomes much more complicated. I remember when we were working on the measles elimination, you know, or polio certification is an extremely sophisticated, time-consuming process. Just to say that you have absence of community transmission. You know, written like this is extremely simple, but actually proving that, that's, that's, that's a different, whole different ball game up there. So uh, the core requirement is that country has to have to certify that they don't have community transmission of cholera. And there's a clear definition of what a community trans transmission is. And of course, you want to trust the surveillance system. So the key is the surveillance system. You cannot find what you don't look for. And uh, if you uh, tell us that you, there's, you don't have something, you actually have to prove that uh, you have been looking really seriously to tell us that you don't have cholera. So these are the key basic principle, and uh, they are the same for all disease a eliminations. So um, the principle, very standard. That, that, that's, the, that's what we want to achieve. We want to be able to standardize the process because there will be mechanisms put in place, there will be processes, and this has to be standardized because you want to transparently really transparently assess all the countries on common denominators. So we want to be able to provide countries with, uh, you know, really standardized uh, processes. But once a country achieves elimination, it's not the end of it. Uh, we want to make sure that they have they still have process in place to uh, quickly and rapidly identify, you know, importations. They happen, you know, Malawi, has been is the typical example when it comes to polio. It's a really bad example where countries certify, the region certify polio free, and all of a sudden you have a, a nasty polio bugs that just pop somewhere in the country. So you want to be able to make sure that the country still has in place some processing to rapidly detect any importation. And uh, you also want to make sure that countries have in place some processes to assess their own vulnerability. They want to be able to, uh, be able to detect local transmission. So being certified cholera free is not the end of the story. And as they say in polio, a polio case somewhere is a threat to uh, polio, to, 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 to everywhere. I think that's, I forgot exactly what it is. The scenario, this is the typical scenario so a country, let me pop the next one, yeah. A country, that's a definition, three-year period, no cases, we trust the surveillance system, they get into what's called a pre-recognition because that's the phase, okay, we have achieved the definition, the requirement for cholera certification. So now we are back on the process of being certified. So that's that, that period. And once they have done that, they compile all the documents, we'll see, standard documents, you know, looking at uh, the epidemiology, the transmission, the dynamic of cholera in the country, and of course, looking at the, all the surveillance requirements, and they submit that to the GTFCC. And we'll see in the upcoming slide that there is uh, 
uh, it's not when they say DGFCC, it doesn't it doesn't go to Philippe Barbosa, no. It goes to uh, <laughs> to an independent review panel that be put in place to actually assess the country document and uh, certify the country. So once the certification is achieved, it's not the end of the story. Now every year the country will have to submit some what's called an abridged certification document. So every year you have to tell us that, okay, we have, we are certified, cholera free, but we still have all the processes in place, you know, to, uh, to confirm that we are free and that we are still ready to detect any new importation to, to address any residual risk following certification. So this is not um, typical to cholera. You have it in measles, you have it in polio. So that's why I was telling you that we are borrowing from those certification uh, processes. But think can uh, a country can be certified and you lose your certification. Um, we've seen that a lot. Brazil lost their, they lost their measles elimination status because all of a sudden they started to have, you know, local chains of transmission that uh, clearly signify that if they have eliminated measles before, they have measles now. So the same process will apply to cholera. Uh, what happens if a country after elimination, you know, just experience episode of sustained community transmission. All these words have very clear definitions. So we'll get back to those definitions. And of course, we, we can take a look at the document after. So if a country is certified and then they experience sustained community transmission, and there's a definition here, lasting no longer than six months and spreading beyond two thirds of small administrative units. This can be a district or a sub-district or depending on what the country consider the operational unit for uh, cholera elimination in the uh, country uh, uh, cholera elimination plan. So the certification can be kind of suspended. So it means you have eliminated cholera, but hey, yeah, there are some things going on now. You cannot be considered certified cholera free because you have those issues. If luckily they are able to resolve those issues, you know, country and there was an importation or a sporadic outbreak somewhere or a, a small uh, medium sized outbreak somewhere and then it's control, the certification is reestablished. This is normal. The, the US, they almost lost their measles certification standard because I think it was in 2019 or 2018 because they had a you know, huge chains of measles transmission, and they were just crossing their fingers like this. Let's hope this uh, outbreak will not last more than 12 months and we'll lose our elimination certification. So it's the same process here. As long as everything is controlled within 12 months, the certification will be reestablished. Worst case scenario, you have a huge outbreak that persists. Widespread community transmission. You have a outbreak all over the place. Unfortunately, that's happened to a country like Haiti after, you know, years and years, almost a century without a single cholera. That, they were definitely cholera free. And uh, you have a huge outbreak that is sustained over time. Logically, you will not maintain your certification status. You will lose that cholera free. And then uh, when everything is controlled, you go back to, uh, you know, you move to the, to the, to the back of the queue and you, you start again. So this, this is the principle, uh, en gros. So uh, we already discussed that uh, in the WHO regions, uh, all the countries, they achieve certification free status, the region will be certification free status, will be measles, oh sorry, will be cholera certified. And when, when we say region, of course, WHO regions, because that's the definition of a region in all WHO elimination document. So um, this is uh, a little bit about the process, uh, standardized applications submitted by countries, 
uh, for recognition, initial recognition, for uh, annual maintenance, for reestablishment of the of the status, and all the application, of course, are uh, assessed by a, a independent review panel uh, set up by the GTFCC. So, what are the key messages? I told you it was a small, pre quick presentation. Um, free status doesn't mean that you don't have Korea. That's very clear. It makes sense. There are always importations, you know, unfortunately. Um, a recognized status of cholera free, of course, you have to be maintained. And this is normal. As long as the disease is not globally, you know, eliminated, you still have to, to maintain the, the, the status. So this is, uh, this is a basic requirement for all disease uh, elimination uh, document. And we are already mentioned the independent review panel. Uh, is, uh, they will assess transparently, and that's why the documents are standard, because we want country to submit uh, kind of same sets of documents, and uh, the, the process is really is standardized. So there are criteria, of course, to who sits on the independent review panel. Yeah, you can imagine the mix of expert epidemiologists and uh, lab guys and community guys, politicians, you name it, they'll be there. But I don't think we've already agreed on exactly who will sit on the first um, uh, independent review panel. So, uh, so where do we go from, from there? So in June this year, we hope to, um, to have the document endorsed by the GTFCC steering committee. Uh, the document is, uh, I think it's an advanced draft, although I don't like that term. This is an advanced draft. Uh, there are some few cosmetic things to tweak here and there, but it's almost there. So we hope that the GTFCC steering committee will review the document. And uh, in, um, by the end of this summer, the, independent, the first independent review panel will, will be set up. And uh, later during the year, we'll encourage countries to submit applications. But of course, um, this is not like, uh, they, they, they don't happen sequentially. Most of, some of this process will happen in parallel. For example, when we are setting up the independent review panel, we should be discussing with countries that we think should be able to, uh, to, to submit applications for uh, elimination of cholera. So to, uh, to conclude, there is, uh, I'm sure this, there's more to, to this. And if you want to know more, please. Um, tomorrow we have a, a deep dive. I don't know how deep we'll dive, but <laughs> that's a, there's a deep dive on, um, on, on, on cholera uh, elimination between uh, 11.30 and 12.30. So we, we hope to uh, answer additional questions if you want to look at you know, how uh, the process is. If you have more questions on the details, please come to the, to the deep dive. So um, I was just uh, the presenter of this document. So you see the, you know, the large group of people. There was a huge community behind it. Uh, so really, on, uh, on their behalf, thank you for, uh, for listening.